In this chapter, we are going to be looking at Newton's laws of motion. Note, the emphasis is on Newton's second law and we will be using this formula quite a bit, F equals to MA, which is derived from Newton's second law. Okay, before we go to this important formula and before we talk about it in detail, let's talk about Newton's first and third law okay let me state Newton's first law okay Newton's first law states that objects will continue in its state of rest or move with uniform velocity unless acted upon by an external force okay so again objects will continue in its state of rest or they will continue to move with uniform velocity unless they are acted upon by an external force. Newton's first law is also known as the law of inertia in physics. Yeah? Okay, let's deal with Newton's third law. For every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. Let's talk about Newton's third law using a simple example. Okay, we have an object of weight W and let's say this object is resting on a table. Okay? So if you indicate the forces acting on the object, I repeat, if you indicate the forces acting on the object, you will have the weight of the object acting downwards and the normal reaction. Now, take note of this. W, the weight of the object, is the force. Excuse me, is the force of the object on the table. Okay, that is due to the gravitational pull. I'll repeat. W here is the force of the object on the table. Okay, due to gravity. And R here is the force of the table on the object, equal and opposite to W as a result of Newton's third law. I'll repeat. R here is the force of the table on the object. Okay, And this R is equal and opposite to W. So what is the emphasis here? Note W here is the force of object on table. Okay, Object on table. R here is the force of table on object. Okay, So this is a simple example showing you how Newton's third law works. Okay, We will have more to say about Newton's third law as we go through the examples. Okay, Now let's look at the most important idea in this chapter which is Newton's second law and I said we have some important remarks here. Follow this very carefully. Yeah? Now, This is the main formula we are going to use F equals to MA what is F? I want all of us to know F is the resultant force. The emphasis is on the word resultant. F is the resultant force acting on an object and we measure it in Newton. M is the mass of the object we measure in kilogram and A is the acceleration we measure in meter per second squared. Okay, So 1 Newton will be equals to 1 kilogram meter per second squared. I'll repeat. 1 Newton will be equals to 1 kilogram meter per second squared. Next important remark. When there is a resultant, there will be an acceleration. Take note. yeah. When there is a resultant force acting, there will be an acceleration. Now, if the resultant force is zero, then your acceleration is zero. Okay, if resultant force is zero, then your acceleration is zero. And there are two cases. Acceleration can be zero when the object is not moving. Object is stationary. Okay, so acceleration can be zero when the object is at rest. Or acceleration can be zero when the object is moving with uniform velocity or constant velocity. So make sure you know these facts. Okay, 
and another very important idea acceleration and resultant force always act in the same direction yeah I'll repeat acceleration and resultant force always act in the same direction let's look at a few examples the diagram shows a block in rough contact with a horizontal surface so take note rough contact is being pulled along by a horizontal string so we have a string here that is pulling this block along a surface and we have a rough contact now what are we asked to do we are asked to make a copy of the diagram and on it mark all the forces acting on the block and in part B what can you say about the tension in the string compared with the frictional force if the block is in the first case accelerating in the second case it is moving with constant velocity so let's look at the solution we have the block and we have the weight acting vertically downwards that will be W okay and then we have the tension in the string Okay, the tension in the string acting to the right that's what we have here I've labeled it and then we have the normal reaction okay that is the force of the table on the object so that's the normal reaction R and I have my frictional force okay it's being pulled to the right It's being pulled to the right therefore frictional force should be acting to the left so I've indicated all the forces acting on the object please take note of them okay in an exam please label them and tell the examiner what they stand for T tension in the string W weight of the block R normal reaction and FR the frictional force okay and we are done okay before we go to the next part remember motion is horizontal yeah okay motion is along the table yeah along the table so therefore we have vertical equilibrium vertical equilibrium means what r equals to w okay good now we can look at the part the second part what can you say about the tension when the block is accelerating so let's look at my solution and follow it slowly now if accelerating then t must be bigger than fr Okay, so there is a resultant to the right. Now again, okay, because we are looking at this very carefully because this is understanding of F equals to MA. Okay, remember it is accelerating, it's moving to the right. So it's moving to the right, that means T must be bigger than FR. So there is a resultant to the right. Okay, and what is the resultant equals to? We always take T minus FR. Okay, so very important since the block or object is moving to the right, accelerating, then there, there is a resultant to the right, and the resultant will be T minus FR. Now, if you are moving with constant velocity, then acceleration is zero. So, therefore, the resultant must be zero. So, we can write T must be equals to FR great next we have another example where we have to do a few calculations okay so let's read the question each diagram shows the forces acting on a body of mass 3 kg okay take note mass is 3 kg find the magnitude and direction of acceleration on the body in each case so part A is this let's look at part A first okay we have an object there is a 27 Newton to the right and there's a 9 Newton to the left so straight away we can write the resultant will be to the right 27 minus 9 we have 18 Newton to the right again 27 minus 9 we have a resultant of 18 Newton to the right therefore straight away we know there will there will be an acceleration to the right okay so since we know there is a resultant of 18 Newton to the right and there will be an acceleration to the right I've indicated this on a picture we can write F equals to M A and therefore A will be equals to F over M so 18 Newton is the resultant 
divided by 3 the mass is 3 kilogram so 18 divided by 3 you get 6 meter per second squared acting to the right now let's look at the second example part B we have got four forces 24 Newton to the right we have got another 24 Newton here also acting to the right and there's an 8 Newton acting upwards and there's an 8 Newton acting downwards so vertically we know the 8 Newton and this 8 Newton will cancel so we have vertical equilibrium yeah that is what I've written here there's vertical equilibrium therefore the resultant equals to 0 so I made a remark here the 8's cancel out yeah we have 1 8 acting upwards and 1 8 acting downwards they cancel out so the, the resultant is 0 horizontally we have a 24 to the right and another 24 to the right so we have a resultant of 48 Newton to the right okay I've drawn a little picture here a little picture for us to follow there is a resultant of 48 Newton to the right therefore there will be an acceleration to the right okay now we can easily work out our A will be F over M okay so take 48 divided by 3 you will get acceleration 16 meter per second squared acting to the right